So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Diamond Hills. With us, there is no missing word. We speak the word the way they are, irrespective of whose ox is God. That is what we do, and there is nothing changing us going forward. If you are a new viewer, please subscribe to this channel and drop your comment. Press the notification bells so that when we drop new content, you will be the first to see it. All right, let's go there. So today, on popular demand, we will be digressing a bit. So, sequel to one of our video of last week, titled Nigeria has gone to the dogs, why Ghana is making all the giant strides. So, many of our Ghanaian viewers and subscribers demanded that we do one of more contents, detailing the relationship, competition, and similarities between Ghana, Nigeria, and eventually some other West African neighbors. Okay, so as a responsible media outfit, channel, I will promise to do just that when the time avails itself. Okay, so we will try to do justice to that the best way we can today. It is on equivocally clear that our main mission statement on this channel is to propagate and push for a good governance in Nigeria and an independent Yoruba nation out of the present day Nigeria because of the irreconcilable fundamental differences and barbaric nature of the Hausa Fulani politician and leaders up not. It is our opinion, based on fact and figure, that the amalgamation of Southern and Northern Protectorate and the 1999 Constitution is pegging Yorubas to one spot, is serving as a barrier to progress. The last 60 years, Yorubas have been living below the standard they are supposed to be operating from. And this is not acceptable. That is why the Yorubas must have greater autonomy and govern themselves independent of the present day Nigeria. This is what we are hard to propagate. And we believe we're going to make sources out of it. All right. Notwithstanding, we are going to be considering this topic today. Hmm? Okay. Let's go there. Since I know myself as a child, I've been one way or the other in the midst of Ghana people back home in the days in Nigeria. I'm talking about 1982, 83, 84, 85 to date. Most of our neighbors then in Ogun State were Ghanaians. Almost all my teachers in secondary school in 1984, 85 were Ghanaians. Teachers handling key subjects like English, mathematics, integrated science, additional mathematics, etc., etc. Having said that, I have only respect and good memory about good people of Ghana. Most of our tenants in Ondo State, I mean my father's tenants, most of them, they are, they are from Ghana. Teachers, restaurants, operators, 
many of them, you know, them are also farmers, doing well. They are also from Ghana and they give a good account of themselves. And since I moved abroad some years ago, I've been rolling with good Ghana guys and good Ghana ladies. In fact, all have been attending Ghana church since I came to this, to this land and I have no reason to regret. I have only good things to say about my association with Ghanaians. In fact, the guy I follow to this city is a Ghanaian. And he took me like his brother. And, you know, so I can only speak good things about Ghana. Ghana and Nigeria, they are brothers and neighbors. You understand it? So, let's go there. Normally, Nigeria and Ghana are brothers based on tradition, culture, way of life, and above all, we are of the same black race, blessed by God. Every man is the architect of his own fortune and misfortune, likewise, as the case may be. Whatever international opportunities and attention Ghana is getting today, it's because they position themselves at the right spot and created an, an enabling environment to make such good things happen. Hmm? Good things happen to those that are prepared. Opportunities happened to those that position themselves properly. That is it. Twitter, for example, must have done their own work and feasibility studies technically well before choosing Ghana as their West African headquarters. They surely have good reasons for, by, for bypassing Nigeria. They surely have good reasons for bypassing Nigeria. Nigerians knows why. Nigerians themselves, they know why such decorations and opportunities bypassed them. The politicians in power are just committing all the blunders in the book, both politically, financially, and economically. Nigerian politicians are all committing all the blunders in the book, both politically, financially, and economically. You can never be planting all the bad seeds and be waiting for a good and bountiful harvest. I won't say more than this. Or else the Nigerians will come for me. <laughs> the Nigerians they will come for me. So let me stop it there. So I was so proud to be an African when Ghana president was addressing Switzerland contingent about cocoa export to Switzerland. Hmm? I was very proud to be an African when I was listening, watching the video of how Ghana president was addressing the Switzerland representative when they were discussing about cocoa business. Hmm? It shows that Ghana is rising up to assert their position in world politics. To assert their position in world politics. And that is how it should be. Size alone should not be the only thing Nigerian should be relying on to be qualified as a giant of Africa. Size alone is not everything. Nigerian must put their act together if they want to matter in the committee of nations. I rest my case there. Okay, let's move to another industry. Let's leave government alone now. In the entertainment world, Nigerian musicians are doing so good at home in Africa and in the world stage. I got to state it here on 
equivocally that the only sector that is still keeping Nigeria afloat now is the private sector. And that's why all Nigerian music stars are global brands. And the Nollywood too is doing so good because the filthy and incompetent ends of Nigerian politicians are not laid on those sectors. Because the incompetent ends of Nigerian politicians are not laid on those sectors. Ghana also, in the same breath, is not doing bad in the entertainment scene, both musically and in the theater art. I think they call it uh, Gollywood. Yeah, so Ghana film industry is doing well and they make a lot of synergies with Nigerian Nollywood. And I think this is a welcome development. They both can learn from each other. No competition, no flexing of muscle, but synergy and collaboration is the way to go. This won't be out of place. All right, now let's go to some lighter <laughs> topics. I do not wish to join in the jollof rice fray. Reason being that I've never eaten Ghana jollof rice before. Maybe whenever I visit Accra or Kumasi, then I should be in the position to form an informed opinion about which jollof rice is better, which country does it better, Ghana or Nigeria. But let me state it here clearly, I have eaten uh, Ghana rice, the one they call uh, wanche. I've eaten wanche with this, uh, what do you call it? I've eaten this, this wanche rice, that's tasted very good, but jollof rice, I've never eaten from Ghana, so maybe next time when I have holiday, maybe when I visit Accra or Kumasi, then I should be in the position to form an informed opinion. Okay, I've eaten Nigerian jollof rice, I know how it tastes. But it takes two to tango. I have to compare from Ghana before I can form an opinion. All right. So I grew up to know big famous Ghanaian sportmen, both in football, boxing, and other sports. And these are the things to be appreciated about Ghana. Nigeria are also not doing bad in that regard. Only that at Diamond Hills, we don't usually mention names. We don't do name calling. If not, I should have been calling name this one, this one, this one. But we don't. We, we mention the name of politicians because we are here for them. Because they are the ones that put Nigeria in the mess. But when it comes to other private individuals, we don't do that. Okay, so but you know, Nigerian stars, Ghana stars, they are abundant all over the world. In Europe, in America, you know them. So both countries are doing good in this regard, but there's always a room for improvement. So this is my take on the sport scene. Okay? So I think you all know the state of things between Nigeria and Ghana. When it comes to international sport presence, you all know this. To be sincere, I... I give it to both countries, especially in football, in boxing, you know, in the middleweight, in the welterweight, Ghana are doing good, in the heavyweight, Nigerians are doing good, especially now. So, and both countries, never rest on your horse. The sky is the limit. Okay? So, let's go there. All right, let's go back to politics because that is our major area of preoccupation. You understand? To be sincere, the political leadership in Ghana must be doing something right. The political leadership in Ghana must be doing something right 
to attain such level of peace, stability, and a conducive environment. They must be doing something right to have attained that kind of, of that kind of stability, peace, and the conducive environment that is in that is attracting this international business conglomerate, this international business presence that Ghana is, is attracting, there must be something behind it. That means they are doing something good. To everything outstanding, there is something under standing. Okay? So Ghana must be doing something good that Nigeria is not doing. Nigeria, as we speak, is boiling from self-inflicted problems. Nomadic Fulani Esmen, they equally raised their ugly head in Ghana. But the government of Ghana were proactive and they nipped it in the board. They nipped it in the board. They saw it coming and they quenched that fire. Nigeria, on the other hand, look the other way and pamper them for flimsy and petty reasons. Since the president himself is Fulani, he overlooked their wrongdoings and that little innocent lion cub he was toying with has now grown full circles and has reproduced, now killing from north to south, east to west. In Nigeria, these killings, violence, is now setting the country on fire. Hmm? The country is now on fire. I have a suggestion for Nigerian leadership. Nigerian leadership should go to Ghana and learn firsthand how Ghana managed the Fulani Earthmen crisis. As I speak today, Nigeria is totally polarized and may break into many pieces before the end of this year. May break to many pieces before the end of this year. We are not a prophet of doom. We are speaking based on fact and figure. The tension is palpable. The crisis is overwhelming. The confusion is all encompassing. And the conflagration is engrossing. The crisis is at a very mega scale. And the president, this man we are seeing on the screen, it seems he has no answer. Look at him there. That is Buhari there in the middle. He has no answer. He is confused. He is running from pillar to post. He has invited the Americans. He has invited the British. I think nobody wants to play game with this man. Because everybody warned him before the matter snowball and skyrocketed to this level. When the case was still little manageable, they told him, man, this is not the right way to go. Full and knee all over the world. You don't handle full and knee with a kid's glove. You have to handle them with iron hand. But because of tribalism, he himself is full and knee, So that's why he allowed the issue to degenerate. And in Nigeria, the Nigerian power structure, all advisors, they don't tell their boss the truth. They are afraid. They are boot lickers. They massage the ego of their boss. They don't speak the home truth. And the president listening only to those guys. Anyone that speaks the truth will be branded as an enemy. That's why the country is on fire. Fire on the mountain. 
fire on the mountain. <sighs> fire on the mountain. As I speak today, like I said, Nigeria is totally polarized. I may break into many places before the end of this year. The government of the day have no answers to the hydra-headed monster facing the polity and the patience of the ethnic nationalities and the populace in general is, is exhausted. 60 years of hope and dream has now turned to hopelessness and disillusionment. Nigerians are now facing avoidable, harsh realities that are caused by lack of quality leadership, wrong choices, and a misplaced priority. The President 